Hello, boys. Welcome back. In this video, I attempt to win the hardest pro championship in MX Bikes. One year ago, I somehow managed to win this championship. So I didn't think there was that much I could improve on. In fact, I thought this season would be easy. But oh boy, was I wrong. See, the players I was racing were fast. In fact, they were the fastest in the world. And honestly, I wasn't ready for the amount of pain, me, agony, me, and suffering I was about to encounter. So boys, without further ado, enjoy the video. The start of the season was, well, Jesus Christ, Rob. Shit, Vexy! Of course. Well, it was rocky to say the least. After five rounds, I was 26 points behind first place, skills. Perhaps one of the fastest players to ever touch this game. I mean, this man even won the first six races in a row. And I have to fucking beat this guy! Ah! <clears throat> Not all hope was lost though. I had won the last two races. Let's go, boys! Bringing the points gap from 35 to 26 at the end of round 5. Which brings us to round 6. Southwick. Southwick? Is a man's track! Well, a sand track, rather. See, the deep sand sucks the power right out of the 250, which makes carrying your momentum crucial to setting fast lap times here. This coupled with the huge sand rollers and rough braking bumps is why many call Southwick the roughest, toughest, lanest, and mainest track on the calendar. So boys, let's drop the gate. I was forced to run a little wide in turn one, which allowed a few guys to cut under me. Still a decent start though. Well, it was, until... Don't why? After getting back on the bike and passing a few down riders, Skills managed to get around me. Damn, Skills! But then quickly decided that the dirt looked a little tasty. Oh. Even with our crash, we still managed to sit 7th after the opening lap. On the first official lap, Mr. Lucas went down, moving me into 6th. Later that lap, my teammate Keegan made a mistake. Now I close the gap. Paboso, the creator of the game, decided to bend us both over in the next corner. He just decided... Keegan looked a little better. Now into fifth. I had another front tuck, allowing number 169 Shit. Barreto to get around me. Barreto had been putting in the work lately, and had quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with. On lap two, I regained my focus and charged. I quickly caught up to Ashen and got around him after he made a mistake. And over the next few laps, I put my head down and went to work. I mean, I thought I was flying, but after looking up at the gap, I realized I'm as slow as a fucking semi. <laughs> It felt like I was wide open around the track, but I was barely catching the leaders. And Bredo had already gaped me. I mean, gapped, I mean gapped me, I meant, I meant gapped. I wasn't too worried about it though. Remember, I'm the consistent guy. This is how I get my wins. The riders in front of me will eventually crash and I'll end up catching them. And as the laps went on, they did exactly that. With 19 minutes left to go in the race, Hemi went down. And for the next 10 minutes, I started to run some solid laps. I was running 101s to 102s, which was pretty mid. But I knew this pace was slowly chipping away at Garcia in front of me in third. As I was trying to close the gap, I noticed Skills was slowly catching me. I could not let him get around me. I need these points. However, once again, my consistency paid off, and Garcia went down. Now I can put someone between me and Skills. Let's make the move, boys. Third is Ryder. The Mick Creations Ryder is trying to get into that podium position. He's going to off for the outside. Can he get a better drive? He's going outside to outside. Looking to have that speed over Garcia. I'm not quite sure what just happened there, but I no longer see Ryder. Oh. MX bikes might be as stable as a Kardashian marriage, but for once, this wasn't a bikes issue. This was, in fact, a skill issue. That's right, boyos, I ended up getting disconnected from my own Wi-Fi. As I didn't finish the moto, I was now 44 points behind skills. I want to die. To say I was fired up was an understatement. No one was stopping me moto 2. The MX Bikes gods must have felt bad, because they proceeded to give me the luckiest start of my life. 
Somehow, I managed to get out of there alive. So I set my eyes on the leaders. I split second and third, going up the inside of Exhibit and around the outside of Kiwin? 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 I, I, I don't know. But, but call me Moses the way I split these two. Now all that's standing between me and victory is Bredo. He wasn't going to make it easy though, surprising the whole field by winning Moto 1. And he was set on winning Moto 2 as well. I was still pissed after last Moto though, so I put the hammer down. And before long, I started to put the pressure on Bredo. One of the best ways to make a pass is by applying pressure. See, Bredo is way faster than me here at Southwick, but my pressure kept forcing him to make tiny mistakes. And on lap two, the pressure got to him, putting me into the lead of the race. However, Bredo wasn't done. A few corners later, he made the move up my inside, retaking the lead. I was playing the long game though. See, while Bredo was focused on my pressure, I was focused on his lines and where exactly he was making up so much time on me. For every bump, jump, and bend I was behind him, I was picking up tiny bits of information. And soon enough, my pace had significantly increased. I was even running lap times two to three seconds faster than I was in Moto 1. On lap three, I even almost passed Bredo. Once again, applying more pressure. And the pressure must have been too much because later that lap, Bredo crashed, putting me back into the lead of the race. But right when I was about to settle into a flow, I looked up on my map. Yep, of course. Skills was coming, and he was coming hard. Not only was Skills catching me, but so was Bredo. Now I'm the one under pressure. On lap six, I made a mistake and the battle was back on. Luckily, I was able to fend off the attack for now. On the next lap, he was back though, bringing the gap under a second once again, then to less than a tenth of a second. I remained steady under the pressure though, and Bredo once again went down, allowing, you guessed it, number 25 skills to get around him. Now it was his turn. Lap after lap, skills was slowly but surely closing the gap to me. Four seconds, then three seconds, then two seconds, and by lap 10, the gap was under one second. He was relentless. Every single lap, he was keeping the pressure on me, never leaving more than a few bike lengths between us. So far, I had once again remained steady, and with five minutes to go, he crashed too. It must have lit a fire under his ass, because he started to put in a pace unimaginable to most people. And in just five minutes, he brought the gap all the way from eight seconds to just under one second once again. And look who he dragged along with him. That's right, Bredo. The last lap, boys, and it was down to the three of us. Winner takes all. Bredo cracks first and goes down. Very close, a little bit of contact, Bredo's gonna go down. Every corner I could hear Skill's bike getting closer, but halfway through the lap, Skill's went down too. Somehow, we managed to get it done. Let's go, boys. All right, let's look at the points now. After Moto 1, I was 44 points down. And after that huge win in Moto 2, it's now down to 41 points. Pain. It felt like all that hard work making a comeback in the beginning of the season was for nothing. In fact, I was ready to give up. I even messaged my team owner asking if I could move up to the 450 class instead. He was still optimistic, and he urged me to at least stay in the 250 class until round 8. <coughs> Foreshadowing. Gills has not <coughs> left the gate. Gills is confirmed out of this race. Imagine a track with everything you could ever dream of. Big jumps, big hills, and of course, the iconic sand whoops. Welcome to Millville. Millville wasn't perfect though. See, the problem with Millville was it was too smooth. There was nothing to make people crash here. So my usual strategy of consistency was fucked. Millville also had MX Bike's worst enemy. Hill. So boys, with that in mind, let's go racing, I guess. I got punted. Well, shit. I was 21st after all of that. I essentially had no chance. No dreams, no money, no goals, no bitches, no future, no I started to pick my way through the field and avoid the chaos on the opening laps. And after the first lap, I was up to 8th. After a few attempted passes on Hemi, I got Poboso bounced down the hill. I settled back in, and on lap 3, I made the move around Owen. On lap 4, Hemi was consumed by the Whoop Monster. On lap 5, I got around Kiwin? Kellen? <clears throat> Anyways, I was now up to 5th. On lap 6, <laughs> Who? Who the? Who the? Who the fuck is that guy? See, this man Finn right here came out of fucking nowhere. I had no idea who he was. In fact, no one did. I was taken aback, appalled. 
flabbergasted even. My pride and ego could not let this guy beat me, so I locked in. But despite my best efforts, I couldn't catch him. I mean, Finn was even pulling away from me. At one point, I even got around him after he made a mistake. But then he quickly passed me right back like I was standing still. I mean, I don't get it. I was even catching the leaders at this pace. Hey, come here, come here, come here. Look at this, look at this. Let me show you something, come here. See this fucking sand right here? This sand was the death of me! See this game, right? This virtual dirt bike game had a problem, right? The terrain deformation system doesn't like the sand in this game. See, when sand mixes with dirt, it creates holes the size of fucking Hiroshima. Fuck, man, those potholes are so stupid. Thankfully, I got up just in time to remain in front of Greg. Like Woohoo! Yeah! And after taking it extremely slow through that section for the rest of the race, I finally came across the line in fifth. 30 seconds back. Who's this Finn guy? He almost beat Skills. He was six tenths behind Skills. Skills ended up finishing in front of me in second. So once again, I had lost a large chunk of points. Little did I know, however, this would be the last time for the rest of the season that I would finish behind Skills. Oh boys, oh boys, my first ever hole shot, here it comes. Oh. Well, still probably my best start of the season. Things were still not in my favor though. Jay, the guy who won the first moto by 20 seconds, was already out front. And Skills, my championship rival, was right behind me. Not a very good situation, no, not at all. I could not afford to lose any more points to Skills. So as he inched closer, I started to push my limits. Oof, sorry Skills. Luckily, I took Skills down with me. However, the man, the myth, the legend did end up getting around me. And let me tell you boys, Mr. Greg here truly does live up to his name. See, back when I first started playing this game, Greg here taught me how to play. In fact, almost every day for an entire summer, Greg and I played together. Some would even say we had a Sigma male grind set. I mean, I might not even have this channel if it wasn't for Greg. And so, just like the movies, the student will battle the master. And it was perfect. Lap after lap, neither of us making a mistake and neither of us gaining an inch. In fact, we were so similar in pace, I knew I would have to be absolutely perfect if I wanted to beat Greg. There was times where I got a little close to making a pass, but he would always pull back away the next lap. The time was ticking down, but I was speeding up. And on lap six, I really started to find my pace. I got a good run through the sand whoops and closed the gap to his rear tire. And I followed him closely until we approached Mount Martin. Mount Martin is a big, long, and hard hill, where there is plenty of time to be made up. So, I hopped into the corner, got on the throttle early, and scrubbed right past Greg. However, Greg had a faster line at the bottom of the hill, and you can hear him almost pass me on the inside. On lap seven, he was back. He dove down the inside and carried his speed around me in the next corner. I wasn't done either. I once again got a better run into the sand whoops. But he defended the inside. Time to go back up Mount Martin. I got a great drive and was closing the gap on Greg. I barely cased the double going up the hill, killing all my momentum. Going back down the hill, Greg and I had different lines, which almost results in me punting him to the fucking moon. But for now, he held off my attack. On lap eight, Greg made a mistake and went off the track. Now's my chance. Greg once again defends his line perfectly and even pulls away from me in the next corner. I get off the brakes early and try to close the gap again going down Mount Martin, resulting in another close moment. My frustration was growing. On lap 9 I pushed the pace even more, closing in on Greg. Back to the sand whoops, here we go. I seem to have the speed on this part of the track because once again I close in on Greg. But what do you know, Greg once again moves to the inside to defend. He defended too hard though and compromised his entry into the next corner. Here we go, boys. Once again, he places his bike in the perfect position to defend. He was good at this. Too good. It was almost like he taught me everything I know. Well, let's try again up Mount Martin. Greg knew exactly where I'd be and forces me to switch lines, killing all my drive. My frustration grows again. Clearly, I need to try a different approach. Maybe I could pass him in the back section, so I hit the throttle. 
shit, a mistake. My patience had ran out and I pushed the limits too hard. This little mistake caused me to case the rest of the jumps in this entire section. It also cost me my battle with Greg. We were so similar in speed that even just one tiny mistake meant that Greg could get away. And so our battle was concluded. And so was the race. I came across the line in P3, getting third overall. Honestly, that battle was some of the most fun I've ever had in this game. But the crazy part is, our best battle happens next race, at Washougal. Boys, welcome to Washougal, an iconic track on the motocross calendar. This track is, well, it's, it sure is pretty, ain't it? I mean, it's literally a motocross track in the middle of a fucking forest. It can't get much better than this. Oh, oh, oh. Honestly, with how most of my starts go, I was pretty content with this one. After avoiding some carnage on the opening lap, I was into seventh. Not bad. On lap one, Drew got off the track. Later that same lap, uh, this, this guy, <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, he went, he went down. And then I immediately jumped over Pitbull. It's a world By lap two, I was into fourth. However, as I looked in front of me, of course, everyone was a barker. Wait, wait. Go back. Oh my golly gee. Oh my goodness gracious. Skills left the race. Remain calm, boys. Remain fucking calm! This was it. My opportunity was here. My one chance to reel this championship back in. I know what I have to do, but I don't know if I have the strength to do it. And that is go fast. <laughs> See, all the guys in front of me were, well, honestly, they were faster than me. And usually, I wouldn't worry about it. Like always, I would just be more consistent and hope they go down. But no, not this time. I was not leaving it to chance. I have to win this race. So, I sacked up and started to go fast? Whoa. What the? I mean, at this speed, I had the bike control of Joe Biden. Look at these guys. They're laughing at me. What would the dirt bike dykes think? The big bike baddies. The two smoke shoddies. No, this was my chance and I was not gonna blow it. So I grabbed myself by the tip of the dick and locked in. I was 12 seconds behind the leader with 19 minutes left to go. This was gonna get interesting. Let's go to work, boys. Slowly, I started chipping away at the lead. On lap six, I passed Bredo for third. And by lap eight, I had brought the gap all the way down to six seconds. On lap nine, two seconds. Lap 10, one second. My newfound speed combined with my <clears throat> superior consistency made me feel unstoppable. And with just under 10 minutes to go, I had caught the leaders. The fight was on. Only one person standing between me and the leader. Yes, sir. That's right, boys. Good egg. Time for a rematch. As we all know, Greg rides a wide bike, so I knew it was gonna be hard to get around him. We were running a blazing fast pace, absolutely pushing the limits, all while remaining within a second of each other the entire battle. On lap 10, I almost threw it away, but I quickly recovered. Greg had an odd line choice in this section, so I was always able to close the gap here, which put me right on his rear tire going up Horsepower Hill. On lap 11, I got a good drive and significantly closed the gap. I took an inside line and we are now almost side by side. Now's my chance, so I attempt to pass. But he carried his speed around the outside. Another place I was able to make up time was on this step up floater jump. I was able to stay lower on the left side of the jump. We were fully focused, just a few bike lengths between us at all times, always looking for a move or a place to gain time. On lap 12, the gap had remained somewhat the same, but on lap 13, Greg took the slow line again, but this time I was close enough to attempt to pass. I launched the tabletop jumping right over him, but he got a better drive down the straight. Damn it. Later that lap, I was able to get even closer over that step up. And as we went back down the hill, I witnessed a lapper run straight into a track marker. And I ended up following his line. This was it, boys. All my hopes and dreams of this championship are thrown out the window because of one mistake. Wait. Wait! Watch that lap. Oh my gosh, I'm alive. And then Greg makes a mistake. 
Well, that was lucky. Now it was Greg's turn to chase me, and he wasn't giving up. Because Greg is sitting right up, right on Ryder's back wheel. He was following me closely as I tried to catch the leader. Wait, where is the leader? As Greg and I were busy battling, it allowed number 46 Garcia to get away. He was able to get four and a half seconds up the road. I might have felt unstoppable, but there was one thing that could stop me. Time. Time was running out. By the time I got around Greg and set my eyes on Garcia, there was only one minute plus two laps remaining. And with Garcia almost five seconds in front of me and Greg breathing down my neck, one bike length. this was looking dire. I wasn't going to gain time on it. What the fuck? Who, who the... Who the fuck? What, what is going okay, on? Man. <clears throat> Anyways, Garcia must have made a small mistake because before I knew it, I was only three seconds behind him. Holy shit, I might have a chance here, boys. Now only two laps to go, but I was still gaining. 2.7 seconds now. So Ryder still possibly with the chance in these final two laps to maybe make a move for the lead. By the end of the lap, Garcia was right there. Everything was at stake. I have to make this pass. Has really diminished all three riders within a second of each other. Garcia's gonna go down on the roller. Garcia goes down, Ryder retakes the lead. It's not over. Greg is still right on my ass. Greg and Ryder taking those top two spots on the fin- Greg goes down. I round the final corner and I come across the finish line in first place. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Now, you may be asking yourselves, what the fuck happened to Skills? Well, apparently he was having port issues. So essentially his controller was fucked. As Skills didn't finish last moto, and I gained maximum points, the points gap has been brought down from 41 to just 16 points. Right back in the fight, boys. Now, all I need to do is just keep winning. Let's go racing. Fuck. I was now in dead last. After the chaos of the opening lap, Oh my god, that was so lucky. I was able to work my way up to 12th. I was flying. I kept my head down, and on the first official lap, I passed a Vokes, got around Exhibit, Bredo forgot to turn, I witnessed a murder, and then Ryan, well, Ryan just fucking died. Now up to 7th, but guess who's back? At the end of lap 2, Garcia passed me in the woods. Sketchy, boy. On lap 3, I zoomed past Ezra. And that's when I saw it. Yep, Greg and Garcia. The two guys I battled with last moto were right in front of me. On lap four, Mr. Clean went down before the finish. Now into sixth. On lap five, Fatosa went down. Greg and Garcia got around him. But of course, he got up in front of me. I tried to move around the outside, but was quickly fended off. Every second I spent behind Fatosa, I could feel Greg and Garcia getting away. See, Fatosa is an absolute barker and was in third in the championship. And as I was looking for a way to get around him, I saw it. Holy shit, boys. The issue for skills was terminal. Honestly, I could not believe my eyes. Part of me even felt bad for skills. So I did the fair thing, the right thing, the honorable thing. I pulled over to the side of the track and stopped my bike. It just didn't feel right winning like this. Nah, I'm just kidding. What I actually did was I hit the fucking gas. Listen, I'm taking every point I can get. On lap six, Greg crashed. I guess it was time for battle number three because he was in my ass. <clears throat> on my on my ass, sorry, on my ass. We started to work together and work our way through the field. On lap seven, we got around Isaiah. We stayed on the gas, and on lap 10, we caught Fatosa. And he went down too. We were now into third and fourth. Next up, Garcia. Oh, also, Finn, remember that guy from Millville? Yeah, he was, uh, he was out front by like 30 seconds, so no one was catching him. As the laps went on, no one seemed to have an advantage on each other. I wasn't faster than Garcia, and Greg wasn't faster than me, until lap 14. He must have been tired of sitting behind me, because he rapidly caught me and started to apply some pressure. Now the gap was just a half second between us. Every corner I could hear his bike revving. I knew he would attempt to pass soon. On lap 15, Greg turned into a rocket, the way he blew by me up first power hill. I defended the inside and held him off for now. And now Garcia goes down. Up to second. Now they were both chasing me. On lap 16, Garcia fucking flies around my outside. Later that lap, I rail the corner before Horsepower Hill. I get a better drive and start closing the gap. I wasn't done yet, boys. Wait, what? what? Greg scrubs right past me out of nowhere. Where did that come from? Now it was my turn to chase. But as we were battling, I didn't notice time had run out. And before I knew it, it was the last lap. 
Here we go, boys. I gain a lot of time in the S section, inching closer to gray. It was coming down to the wire, and in the final corner, I attempt a dive bomb. It doesn't work, but Garcia goes down, putting us into third and getting us enough to win the overall. Whew. What a race, boys. And after winning the overall and skills not finishing both motos, I was now leading the championship by four points. We got the red plate back, baby. But just as this championship was reaching its climax, it was over. See, unfortunately, skills was never really the same after last race. And at Unadilla, I extended my points lead to 27. In Moto1, I got a decent start. And worked my way into second. And just as I was going to battle Finn for the lead, his game crashed. Rip, 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 rip. So I got first in Moto 1. Nice, boys. In Moto 2, another decent start. Until. Bye. 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 Fuck me. Fuck me. I then proceeded to make the best comeback of my life. And on the last lap, I passed Barreto for second, getting me first overall. Let's go, boys. Like I said, skills was never really the same. He finished sixth in Moto 1 and 12th in Moto 2. And that was it for skills. The next week at Bud's Creek, he moved up to the 450 class, abandoning the championship. So basically, all I would need to do is show up to the next race, and I would win the championship. And I showed up, boys. We went out with a bang. In Moto 1, I battled for the lead with Harry. However, I'm bad at the video game. After a few too many crashes, I finished second. Oh, that was a pretty shitty moto. However, in the second moto, Finn and I finally battled for the lead. I even ended up making the best pass of my entire life. Race wins under his belt, and he will definitely be looking to make it three as wider, doing a big set over the mid-creations and hill, and he is gonna fly by Finn. What a move by Ryder, just fully sending it as we're coming into that 15 minute mark. Unfortunately, I crashed one lap later. I got third overall at Bud's Creek, and that was it. I won the championship. Whew. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. As much as I wish there was some epic ending to this championship, there wasn't. An underwhelming ending to my underwhelming 250 career. Sure, I may have won the championship on pure luck, but hey, a win is a win. I'm taking it. <laughs>